Hello folks, welcome. LMDE6 Cinnamon Desktop. Linux Mint makes two different Cinnamon Desktops. Um, the current version of Linux Mint 21.3 and LMDE6. There is a lot of similarities between the two and then there's not so much. So today's video is on LMDE6 Cinnamon. Filming in 1920, by 1080, you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. So the subject matter for today is going to be text scaling, how it affects certain things on your system. And it can actually make changes from one side of the settings to another. And then I'm going to talk about if you have a keyboard with a caps lock, numeric lock key with no indicators, how you can get a little icon popping up and also how to add an applet. These are independent. And uh, this one will stay lit depending on how you left your caps lock key, for instance, or numeric lock and make noises at the same time. And the last item I'll discuss is scroll bars, large scroll bars. So uh, welcome folks. I will uh, first close this window and open up system settings. I do recommend that you watch the video in its entirety. So, we have large text, one slider in accessibility option. When this is on, the text is a little bit larger than normal. I'll turn this off and you can see the Monday, May 20, get a little bit smaller. Also, the LMDE6 is smaller. And now it's a little bigger. This is a scaling factor of 1.2 that actually has a direct relationship to your font selection. So this part of the system is talking to this part and the other way around too. So I'm going to open up the appearance font selection and just point out a couple of things to you. I will also recommend that you do screenshots. Linux Mint 21.3 and LMDE6 both have screenshot tools with three options. Anyways, the fonts are tens across here. You can certainly alter those. But the scaling factor I want to first talk about, it's sitting at 1.2. You can also increase that and I do that, I would do that sparingly. Again, I would also make a screenshot before you play. So you agree that this is on, right? And the text is large. Now what I'm going to do is turn this to one and let you see that setting has been turned off. That is what I'm referring to, a direct relationship. So if I put this at 1.2, this setting reactivates. So if 1.2 is not good enough for you, then drop to font selection and increase that to something larger. Do it very sparingly. I'll leave it at 1.2. Then I'm going to throw you up for a wrench here. I'm just going to make mention of the fact that anytime you're dealing with visual elements on any type of a desktop, you should always check your screen resolution also. If your graphic card supports scaling, you also may want to investigate that. As you can see, I can change that to 4K if I like. I'll have different options when I deal. But uh, more importantly, let me continue. Now that you know that there's a direct relationship between your accessibility, large text, and your font selection text scaling factor. And again, you can also increase that in here, but not here. Toggling this on and off is your fastest move. Now, I'm going to talk about this icon right here that just populated and has three sizes to it, and it's not controlled in here but the activation of the icon is controlled here. So this has a relationship with this icon or setting. So I'm going to open that and go to page, the, I'm sorry, not page, a tab, keyboard. Under the center section, use visual indicator for caps and numlock, numeric lock. This is normally off by default when you install LMDE6. So if I press that same caps lock key, and I want you to watch this applet that normally monitors this. This will change, but you won't see that icon pop up. So again, they're independent. The applet and that icon are independent. 
So I'm going to turn this back on and press that again. So now you can see it. The size of this icon is determined in a different area, not here. But this needs to be on first. So that's why I do these kind of videos, especially for new users. And if you are new to Mint, welcome. So let's go to notifications and talk about the Media Keys OSD. It's a funny name, but it actually has a disabled. If you do that, I want you to watch this icon because I'm going to press the caps lock key on my keyboard and you will see that this uh, not light up anymore in a post-it note. But there's no icon that's being displayed because I, had, I have it turned off. So you have three sizes. The small looks like this and I'll toggle that a couple of times and I'll use the numeric key also so you can see it. Lock and unlock. And this is the medium. I'll just use the caps from now on. And this is the large, my preferred. Keep in mind, don't forget about your screen resolution also it has some bearing on how things look to you. All right, so far so good. Now let's talk about applets. This is an applet. If you are fairly new to Mint, all of these guys down here are applets. These are standard icons. So I'm talking, when I say applets, I'm talking about this side of the panel bar. But uh, since this is a semi see-through panel bar and you can see this walkway right through it, I'm going to turn that feature off. That's an extension. So put your panel back to standard. All right, so it's gray or black or whatever you want to call that color. So applets can be found here. You can right click on your panel bar and click the puzzle piece, applets. You can also go to the mint menu. Your icon will be a round one if you did the standard install and that. I have all kinds of videos on my YouTube site. And then I'll talk about the scroll bar last. We're going to talk about applets now. So it doesn't matter how you, you do this. You can, again, you can open it this way also. I'm going to uninstall this. I actually like this icon, but I don't like what they've changed on it from a couple of years. I think it's been a couple of years since I've been using this. It used to be when you installed it that it would show up on your panel right away. It doesn't do that anymore. And I think that a lot of people are deleting them after they find out that it doesn't show up right away. I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to uninstall this thing. And then we're going to go look for it. So one more time, you could just right click and hit applets and go to downloads. Now there's a lot of stuff in here, as you can see by the scroll bar. I'll talk about the width a little bit later, but I'm going to type in C A P S like caps, like as in caps lock, because we're looking for lock key indicator with notification by Centurix better lock. I like this indicator. However, I don't, like it for new users because they get confused with it for installation and activation. It's not that hard to install, but it's activating is a little confusing. So I'm going to go to their Spices website and read about it with you. So here's the information on this. All right, and you can see that they did a last commit edit, uh, adding silent notification option. That's fine and dandy. It shows whether the caps lock key numeric blah, blah, blah is on and displays a notification. It does not tell you to turn uh, or to configure it before use. That's my whole point here. The rest of these are just comments. So let me give you the 411 on this. So install it first. Again, I'm not disrespecting the developer. I would just like to see them change it back to where they had it at least for installation. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a second. First, install it. Go to Manage. If you don't know anything about applets and you're fairly new, you need to click on an applet and hit plus to make it visible. So that's why you have check marks on these. So I'm going to click this. And again, the reason I turned off the transparency, because I wanted you to see this, there's going to be a bar that's going to install itself here that will be invisible with that lock key indicator. That's my beef with this particular applet. After that, I'll show you how to fix it 
and it'll be nice and um, useful to you after that. So I'm gonna hit plus. I don't know if you just saw that there was a white bar that just blinked over here. I want you to take a real cl close look at this icon and right next to it. I'm gonna turn it on and off again. So how do you know that's on? You don't. By, uh, by looking at this, it doesn't say pre-configure it first, but you need to, to make it visible. What's the first thing that someone that sees this does? I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people uninstall it immediately because they can't see it. So if the developer would have just turned on one icon, probably would have saved a lot of time for people thinking that it's broke. It's actually in here. I'm gonna take my mouse cursor and, and let you see it. It's right there. I'll do it again. I'll come in from this side. Then I'm gonna right click on that tiny bar and let you see remove lock indicator with notifications and more importantly, configure it. It's all off. I'm pressing the caps lock key. Nothing is lighting up. So yes, most people will probably think it's broken. However, if you just find it, do you wanna do it this way? Probably not. However, if the developer had turned this one on, I probably wouldn't even be talking about this because that's I believe that's how it was in the past. Actually, I think there was both the uh, A and the number key on there, which is your numeric lock. But I'm going to turn that back off so you can see how it comes installed. So don't panic. Right click, applets, walk over to the gearbox. <clears throat> you cannot configure this until you turn it on. I'll show you why. I'll turn it off. It is installed, yes, but I can't click a gearbox that has not been activated. That is confusing to some, and again, here's the deletion key that some will perform. Turn this on first. Again, you've got a blank bar that flipped, then click that. Turn at least this one on so you can see it. Then you can turn on your numeric which produces a one. And if you like the SCR lock, then you can turn that on also. It looks like an arrow. I'm gonna turn this one off. If you don't like it to make any noise, then turn this off. If you like it to show notifications, which I do, I turn that off. I don't really care for this one, but I at least like these three options. I hammered on this point because I know a lot of people the way people think on some of these things for new users, if it doesn't work right out of the box, it automatically heads for uninstall. But uh, now I'm going to close that and I'll let you see this works fine right now. Okay. And what benefit of, is this actually? Well, I'm gonna turn my caps lock on the little post-it note disappeared, right? Because that is coming from a different setting, which is from here. And again, the size of that icon is coming from here. But since that's gone away and I'm working along, I'm typing away, I'm getting ready to open up a browser and go to a website that requires login credentials. Uh, do I want the caps lock key on? Probably not. If my panel is visible, I can see that right away. Oh, caps lock key is on. Better turn it off. You know, most of the time when you need caps, you press the shift key and then you can depress that. You can also turn these on by clicking them. Some extra features, right click. You can also slide these on. I don't really use those features. I use the visual indicator though. Now that I turned notifications on this part, do you like the notifications in the right hand corner? If you don't, you can move it to the lower because with the configuration of this, it does not show you position. That is done with another intersecting setting. Everything plays together, remember? So the applet plays with this one also. First, that has to be on, which it is by default, 
but you can also move the notification to the bottom side of the screen by doing that. Now it'll appear down here. That's in case you have icons populated up here. That's all up to you. The post-it note left there in four seconds. Is that enough time for you? If not, change this. You have a plus or minus, or you can directly put in a number. Okay. The last item I'm going to talk about is this guy right here. So to make large scroll bars on your system, you uh, right click and you get into system settings and you open up themes. Normally, well, I wouldn't say normally, but sometimes you have this setting on the simple one. If that's the case, then just open up themes and click advanced settings. Then click the last tab called settings. This is normally off. Override current themes scroll bar width. You can probably guess what it's going to do, but I'm going to show you what it looks like without it. It's very thin. Okay. So even in the file manager, it's uh, the same size. Uh, I'll find something that has a scroll bar. Here we go. So your file manager, Nemo, is pretty smart, though. If it doesn't need a scroll bar, it doesn't display it. So if I make these icons smaller, there's no scroll bar required. All right. As I make it bigger, uh, scroll bar, because there's more goodies down below. Okay, let's make that larger. So we're going to go to settings and turn this on. The default is 10. What's a 10 look like? I'm going to close and reopen as that's required for it to reset. So that just increased slightly. Okay, we're going to make that a little bit fatter though. How much fatter do you want it? Do you want it maximum? Well, that's what that's going to look like. I'll give you the file manager perspective. That's jumbo. That may work for a lot of people. Maybe not so much for others. But if you want a jumbo scroll bar, there you have it. If you want something in between, then I would probably go to like a 20. So crank this down to about the middle. Close and reopen. If you're good to go with that, that's the same size on your file manager, by the way. Don't forget about that screen resolution. It has a lot of bearing on how we visually look at everything. Thank you for watching.